Here's a free sample from my course, Permaculture Pigs Premium Edition. If you guys are interested in more of this kind of content, check out the link. I'll leave it in the description. I'm Joel Salatin at Polyface Farm. I'm Matt Grundish. I'm a, con a contract farmer for Polyface. Okay, nice. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We produce about 800, 900 uh, hogs a year on pasture. So, um, you know, this isn't backyardish, but it's very scalable to a back, uh, scalable to a backyard. He's all alone. You're gonna move these 50 pigs by yourself. Yep. There are 50 in here? Um, yeah, I and, mean, the groups are generally around 50. Some and this are is smaller, some are 36. And this some is are about 50. a half acre paddock? Yeah, half acre. Whoa. You can do an acre. So when I move them, the first, for usually the first couple moves, you need a few people um, because they're just not used to it. So you just get like two or three people walk down to the end and then push them up. Okay. But these guys are used to moving. There he goes. He's just walking them. He's getting some stragglers there, but they know the drill. Dialed in systems. Look, are you serious? It's like we're herding cows right now. Are you serious? I'm serious. This is amazing. One guy moving 50 pigs. So the first thing is uh, is training. I, I, you know you. Pigs really respect electric fence even more than, you know, even more than cows, really, because they've got that tender nose and they want to sniff everything. But the difference between pigs and cows is that their tolerance is way less. In other words, if you, if, if, if here's the ground and here's the fence, a cow, you, you've got some pretty decent tolerances on how, how high the fence can be. A pig, you don't. Because, the, because it's a lot closer tolerance. Um, and remember that a pig's nose is pretty low, so you want the wire to be at pig height. So normally, the difference between the ground and the wire is gonna be somewhere on, on a little pig. Uh, we use two wires on a bigger pig, a, a higher wire, but it's never gonna be higher than about, than about 14 inches. About 14 inches is about as high as it's ever gonna be, even on a big pig. That's not very high, remember, if a, given a choice, a pig would rather go under than over. A cow would rather go over than under. So if you're going to err on a cow, make the wire high. If you're going to err on a pig, make the wire low. Those are you know, just different nuances of animals. Well, first, is that like aluminum 10 gauge wire just from tractor supply or do you have a specific? Well, we, we prefer aluminum, aluminum high tensile wire. Okay. Uh, for our permanents, we use 12 and a half gauge. Um, well, for our pig pastures, all we, we use 12 and a half gauge. That's big enough because you know we're in very remote areas, and so you know we've got to be able to, to have a deer trip over it, a bear. You know, uh, it's not high, so everything can go over it. But it's just do they catch a foot? Do they you know that sort of thing? And it's just rebar metal posts with plastic insulators too. I noticed. Yes, yes, it is. It is except for corners where we use wooden posts. Okay. All right. Um, so, so, so when we're tr so the first thing is to train them to go out, and so so we have a we have a physical a physical uh, you know pen in the you know it, somewhere physical a physical fence all right, and what we do is we just put we just cut a corner off with electric fence, and there's a spring in the middle of this training wire, and of course you know here's your here's your you know here's your energizer over here, and. And uh, it's very short, and the, the the pigs are here, and of course, as they hit this, uh, they get shocked. We're, we're training. You want a really hot spark. I mean, like you know, ten thousand volts is is good. When you're training pigs, you want their first um, you know experience to be memorable. Okay. The reason for the spring in this training wire is so they can go through it and they won't break the wire. Without the spring, they're going to keep breaking this wire. And then you're going to go out there, you know, 10 times a day is going to be pop, pop, pop. This wire is going to be sitting on the ground and you're not training the pigs. So the wire lets them, you know, lets them go through and be trained and, and, uh, and, and, and they're, you know, they, they won't break it. Okay. 
So now we're going to go out. Now we're going to go out to a field, and our preference. So so we've got you know, we've got a field out here. What did this look like before you guys got started out here? Uh, it's pretty much a giant briar patch that was above your head. Okay, this that's crazy. Because you know, I would think if you're going to a landowner, they're not doing much with their land. They might be scared of pigs coming in. Right. Yeah. But if they could come and see that this is the work. <laughs> This is what's gonna happen. Yeah. yeah. It's nice and peaceful and quiet. Yep. Doesn't stink. If, if the landowner was to say, okay, you guys have to go, this stuff isn't that hard to tear up. Yeah. No. Just the, what, a the, day's the posts work? are the most permanent thing that you have out here. That's right. You haven't invested a lot or any in permanent. Yeah, I mean, you might come and pull up your post, would you? Right. I mean, you could, or you, I mean, if you didn't care, you could just leave them. It's it's not treated wood or anything. It's just a locust post. It'll last a long time because it's locust. Yeah, but, but you would pull up your wire. Pull the wire. You could probably pull out of here in a day or two and pull up the water line. Get rid. Of, we have a cistern up there that yeah. feeds this whole thing, sort of as like a pressure tank. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you're leasing land, it. say you're leasing land in Virginia, and for some reason, oh, your your family, the rest of your family is in Michigan, and you want to move out there. Right. Okay, yeah. let's Pick go find here. some lease land in Michigan. Yeah, <laughs> I mean the the post didn't cost Joel anything but labor. He yeah, cut him off his own farm. It's it's a pretty simple it's system. It's a beautiful model. Yeah. Okay. Does it matter how many acres? Doesn't matter how many acres. Okay. Um, what we like to do is put a a central um, a central alley. So this is the way it goes. Um, it comes out here to a gate. All right. So these are all gates. And then the other side of the alley is going to have opposing gates. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay. It could be a forest too. It doesn't have to necessarily. It, it, can, it can be a forest, a pasture. Uh, I mean, it works great in like old cropland, old crop fields. Yeah. Are those um, physical gates? Like wooden, I saw up in your no, no, you had wooden. No, okay, so then, so then you have, um, each of these has, okay, okay, like yeah. this, all right, these paddock sizes will vary depending on your scale. So if you're only running, you know, 10 pigs, these paddock sizes would probably be um, well, we're, we're running 35 to 50 in a group half acre paddocks. Okay. So if you're running 10 pigs, you probably want, uh, what's a, what's a fifth, a, uh, a, a, a fifth of half, fifth, fifth of half is, um, uh, whatever it is, uh, you know, uh, Maybe a, tenth. a fifth of half. <laughs> we're, <laughs> whatever we're, we're having trouble figuring. <laughs> And if look, if a half an acre is twenty five hundred square yards, a fifth of an acre would be five hundred square yards. Okay. Which five hundred square yards, you know, you can configure it however you want to. I mean, you know, five hundred square yards could be could be ten by fifty. It could be twenty five by twenty. Okay. All right. So you know, the, the, the it, it can be configured any number of ways. All right. But the, but the point is, you're you're going to. Um, you're going to lay out these these paddocks. And these lines so far are actually electrical lines. These are these are electrical lines, yeah. and I'm I'm going to, I'm going to fill in something here in just a minute. Okay. And theoretically, you wouldn't have to have all these necessarily set up if you only had the infrastructure. You could actually move these, right? You could. Or do you like to set them all up? Well, the reason that we have set these up. You know, the reason that we don't move the pig fences on these on these pig pastures is because the pigs actually do a fair amount of landscaping. Okay. So over time, they actually root up. The, you know, here's here's the wire going, okay, and the you know and and the stakes and you know, the insulator, and they actually they actually mound up. They make mounds because they're rooting here, rooting here, they actually create okay. berms under the wire. So, you, you know, over time, you have to raise your insulators a little bit uh, as, as they berm it up. But once, once that berm is up, it vegetates, it, 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 uh, it grasses over, and it becomes very, very stable. So that is a real great protection for erosion and things like that. You're almost creating a, a, a bit of a, you know, a rice paddy uh, uh, idea. 
That, that's why people people have actually terraced with pigs. Use pigs to terrace a hillside, make real narrow strips, make real narrow strips, and the pigs will move the soil, you know, enough that, that it kind of flattens, yeah. and you can make a you can make a, a like a you know a, a, an eight foot wide terrace. I wouldn't make it less than eight because the pigs would be. No animal likes to be forced to be real close to the to electric fence, so um, so although they will walk up to it close. They never like to be um, forever confined where they can't get, you know, more than a couple feet away from it. So, you know, I wouldn't make a, I wouldn't try to make a six foot wide terrace, but, you know, eight to 12 foot wide terrace on a hillside. Absolutely. Yeah. Pigs will do that. Someday I want to do that. Just, just to, just to show it. Because th th there, there are few things in my view as pretty as, as terraces. Yeah. Agriculturally, they, they really make a beautiful landscape. All right. Now you'll notice that I haven't connected these. So each one of these gaps here, each one of these gaps here. Uh, so remember this, all of these are electric fence, and so all of the corners have a wooden post. All right, I won't put them all in, but, but, but you get all of these have wooden posts. These are electric fence gates. I'll, I'll put dots in. So these are your access. You, these are your access. You know, with the like the track, the feed buggy, the uh, you know the pigs. Uh, you know, if you need to get the pigs into an alley, whatever. Um, but but these these are equipment access. Um, we have uh, we have portable uh, pig shelters, for example. Uh, so you got to be able to get you know your shelters. So by having the um, so so these are big, wide electric fence gates. You know, uh, thirty feet. Nice and wide, you can get your turn in and stuff like that. Okay, uh, maybe you're in a wood situation and you want to be able to turn in here um, with the with the tractor to to maybe take out some dead wood or, or clean up. You need equipment access into these paddocks. Now, this one here, we'll use a different color. These this little gap here is going to be a wooden gate. Okay. And the reason for the wooden, so, so what we do is, um, is we come here to the, uh, to, to the wooden post, wooden post here, and we put in a little, and this wooden gate can be six feet, doesn't have to be very wide, six feet. But the point is that way, when the pigs are over here and we want to move the pigs over to here, they don't have to cross an electric fence. The one thing about pigs is because they're so intelligent, their, their time uh, to trust us as humans for their well-being, they never trust us like a cow. And so when we say, hey, pigs, you know, come through here and this is an electric, they come up to it, they look at it. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I wanted that was electric yesterday. It's been electric for a week and I, I can't see it, but I know it's there. They're trying to pull a fast one on me, right? And so by making these little wooden wooden gates, it makes a physical barrier. So the pigs are, you know, they're, they're used to up there scratching and all this on this wooden gate. We take that aside and there's no reticence. There's no reluctance for the pigs to flow through. <laughs> they're cramming to get through. What's really important about this setup, and I'm sure Joel pro or Daniel probably told you guys, is the wooden gates. Yeah. Yes. So pigs, you saw how I had that fence down and they wouldn't cross it. Right. It's even, even if I completely chopped that away and that, that wire wasn't there, they wouldn't cross. Yeah. It's, it's like a mental barrier. It's, yeah. like a, it's like the elephant that gets chained to a little post when he's young. And then when he's older, he still doesn't, under, he doesn't understand he could just rip it right out of the ground. Right. So the, the reason we have those wooden gates is because if they can physically touch it and then see that it's not there, then they'll go through it. Neat. Okay. If, if you try to make the pigs move over electric fence all the time, you'll lose your religion and have a heart attack, you know, in the process. So, so by putting the physical gate in here now, fortunately, so the pigs are in this paddock and, and, uh, all we do is we, we take this gate. So, so, so let's say now we've moved the pigs and they're in this paddock and now we're ready to move them into this one. All we do here is we take this gate and we walk up here and we reinstall it here. And after the pigs are in, we go back and we take the old gate where they were. So, so this gate, this gate has been, has been removed. Okay. And it moved up to this side. Then we go back and we get this gate 
and we carry it over and put it up here. So you only need two gates. You don't have to make a wooden gate, you know, for all these. All you need is two gates because when the pigs come in, they will never beat you to this opening. They're, they're going to immediately quit, you know, start eating grass and clover and stuff. They're going to they're going to start eating. So they stop. They, they come in here and just kind of plug up here. You can take the gate and just walk on up here and, and, and set it up right there. And then you can go back and get this one because they're not going to go back through because they're, yeah, they got new, they got new salad, right? And so, so the wooden gates enabled us to move them from paddock to paddock to paddock, but it can, it doesn't have to be very wide because our, our machinery access for feeder, tractor, you know, uh, firewood, different things, all that access is going to come out of the, out of the alley. Now, the beauty of this is that at any point in here, so the pigs are, are moving, you know, this is paddock one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We, we generally try to like, like to run uh, uh, somewhere between six and ten paddocks because uh, that gives us enough rest period that by the time they get out here to the end, all right, so they get out here to, to ten, then we put them in the alley and run them down the alley and they can start back in paddock one. Okay, and, and 10 paddocks has given us enough time at somewhere between, um, we never leave them in a paddock more than 12 days, and generally they're in there more than five. So what happens is, as they grow, um, because we're giving them the, the self feeder, so they're, they're eating out of the self feeder, that becomes a constant, um, a constant measure. Generally, in wet areas, um, you know, you, you, you want to move them faster than in dry areas because the wetter it is, the more the pigs will dig and, and, and tear up. So, um, so what we found for us that two tons per half acre, two tons of feed per half acre gives us about the right, uh, you know, amount of disturbance. If you over disturb, it turns to weeds. If you under disturb, it tends to go toward uh, brambles and and you know blackberry vines and things like that. Do you have a measure for what's under disturbance and over disturbance, or do people just need to eye it? And I, I, I it think I think that's where each each ecosystem is going to be a little yeah. different, and you're going to have to customize this. But you know it, you'll be able to see very quickly within you know two years you'll be able to see are we maintaining good vegetative cover, um, uh, and 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 if if it's if it's going differently than you expect or than you planned, then adjust your time. You can either, you can either make your uh, paddock smaller, um, uh, make, your, make your group of pigs bigger. I mean, there, there are any number of ways that you can make adjustments here so that you, main, you, so that you move your vegetation in the direction you want it to move. I want to show you guys the succession. The half acre paddock, okay, grass, plenty of it. This is where, they just got moved there. This is where they were. So some moonscape, not a whole lot, some more where their feeder was. There are some uh, briars and weeds about to go to seed, but he said they're going to go in with a bush hog and mow those down. That is what this is going to look like. So they were in there for a week. This is a week ago. This is just a week old, guys. This is a week old. There's, there's still manure on the ground. There's still visible manure hasn't even been absorbed yet. Butterflies. Now look, two weeks. You guys ready to see two weeks? Boom. Oh my gosh. Look at the line I just crossed. Two weeks. What? Matt, did you guys mow in here? No, not, none of this has been mowed yet. So they didn't mow this. So that's why the, the briars are still here. Yep. You won't mow this or will you? It's too late to mow this? No, I think it's it's still mowable. See, most of these haven't seeded out yet. Those have a little bit of a okay. head on them. But, but I mean, at some point, you don't you don't want to cut the grass. Right, yeah. Or do you? Um, so, like most animals, they don't really like the super stemmy yeah. long stuff. Okay. They like that fresh, you know, maybe yeah. three week old grass, mm -hmm. nice and green. Oh. So, if we came through here and you, you can raise and lower a bush hog, so we could chop all these off maybe six inches up. Okay. And then it would give the grass a really good head nice. start to get above it. And ideally, maybe three weeks before they come back in here. Right. Okay. Yeah, so they started up here. Okay, so then this is what? This is, so we're a week old there. This is two weeks. 
mm, since well, they've been in here. A, a week old with the thistles, two weeks old, three weeks old. Oh, okay, this is three weeks. weeks old. And then the fifth one down there is... You guys gotta see four weeks old right here. Four weeks old, it looks like, if you came here, you wouldn't even know, if you were a landowner, you wouldn't even know pigs were been in here. No. It doesn't sting, does it sting correctly? Nope. Does it smell here? <laughs> this is five weeks old. Yep, that's the first paddock. And that wasn't, that, that grass that's growing there wasn't there when they started in here. <laughs> it only came in after they left. Because they, 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 they brought it up right. from the seed bank? Right, yep. Is this? And that's good stuff. Yeah. Every Wait, show me this good stuff. This is Timothy, you said? I believe so. And okay. Uh, broader leaf grass. I think that might be so. Okay, but so I, will you mow this before they come in here? This one is not that bad. The thistles in here are pretty much non-existent. So you're so saying we probably won't. Okay. But, All right, well, thank you for showing me. This is oh, yeah. five weeks? Five weeks. Oh yeah. my gosh, five weeks. And <laughs> we got grass. <laughs> You got grass up your shoulder. Yeah. And that's that's this beautiful stuff. Is it fair to say stuff. this is richer than when you found it? Definitely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the pigs that the pigs are are bringing up the value of this land, not taking it away. Right. Adding value. How does if your electricity source I imagine is right mm -hmm. here, your yep. energizer. Let's just how say does the it jump to the black wire uh, over the wooden gate. Okay. So here's the energizer. Okay. So what we do there is um, Let's do a let's do a let's do a side view here. So we we've got we've got a wooden post here, a wooden post here. There's a wooden a wooden gate here between them. Okay, you know we'll say we've got braces here, and and um, so th this this gate is just you know between these two wooden posts. So we'll we'll draw the uh, electric fence in red. So here here comes the electric fence up to here. And here comes the electric fence up to here. And remember, this gate doesn't have to be very tall. Three feet, three feet's plenty. You know, so it doesn't have to be heavy, doesn't have to be tall. You know, it can be a pretty light gate. So what we do then is we just take a, an electric fence, um, a gate handle, you know, with a, with a hook. And we just hook it to a piece of extension cord. Just cut an extension cord. And we just hook this over here with a gate handle. And run the and just let the extension cord sit on the ground. Run over here to another. I'm sorry, an, another you know gate handle, and we hook it up on this side, and we just let this be uh, a jumper on the non-pig side. Yeah, let me see this. Let me see this jumper. He talked about it, but I couldn't quite imagine it. So this is actually an electric. Yeah, it's cord, just it's shock just, cord um, extension cable. Yeah, it's insulated. The way that this system works is it's a big U. It goes from back there all the way down across the driveway that we uh, came up and then all the way up that side and then we can select which paddocks we actually make hot because mm -hmm. we have jumpers on the end of each line we just hook yeah. the jumpers in the paddock that they're on remove the one that was the, that yeah. they were in and now we can so you're not control. electrifying so now this right. one has no heat it's not hot no this one is hot so the, oh. the, hot oh, the power is down there. there and then we jumper it from this one to oh, the to gates here. okay Okay. And you don't want this to be on the pig side. You want this to be on the not wherever, whichever side the, the the pigs are not, and that just becomes a real long jumper cable. And we just hook it on one side or the other, and yeah. extension cord. R remember when you're doing extension cord, you know, because usually you use a like a you know an older junky piece of extension cord. Uh, just remember if it's a multi. You know, if it's a multi-wire extension cord, make sure that you hook your white on, you know, your, your same color wire on both ends. Yeah. <laughs> so basically you're cutting it and accessing the wire inside this extension cord. I guess you could do an insulated wire as well. You can do an insulated wire. Okay. We just like extension cords because they're made, they're, they're real uh, uh, malleable. Yeah. You know, you can, you can roll them up real quick. The under the underground wires yeah. that you buy from, you know, okay. uh, from electric fence supply okay. stuff, they're pretty stiff. Okay. Yeah, they're made with a single wire and they're pretty stiff to go. Okay, I know. get it. So you're not actually burying this. No, no, it's just it's on, on the ground. With your gates. Yeah. Because yeah. you only need to have You only this need to have it too hot. That's right. That's right. So so here that so that that extension cord, that extension cord is gonna be when, when the when the pigs, you know, if the pig if the pigs are in number three here, okay, we'll We'll say the we'll say the pigs are, are now in number three. All we need is we need to go over here and over here, and we're good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, now, you know, this, this perimeter might or might not be electric depending on your situation. You know, if it's the good roving wire boundary fence or something like that, it might or might not be. So we can't always count on the power to go down here, over here and up. Uh, this, the, the purple may or may not be electric, but all the internal is. So, so the other thing is that by, that by having these not necessarily continuous here, but with jumper cable, with, with jumpers here, it helps you to isolate each of these legs to find shorts, you know, if you've got a short. He's found that these insulators tied to a post like that work better than, say, a plastic energizer that screws mm -hmm. in. Well, see, these are, these are actually movable. So if I need to make a new one, I say this one breaks. I can just make a new one with wire or I can take these and just scoot them up the post mm -hmm. With the plastic ones, they're uh, stapled in so you have to pull the staples Possibly get a new insulator get more staples and hammer it back in taller And these are just locust wooden posts that Joel cut off the farm. Yeah, so they're not you may need to replace the post or It just it's a oh, little bit wow. more efficient. It, yeah, it makes it a and little you bit could tighten more. it here I guess this is where you pull tight on this thing isn't it yeah so if i need to, i i pretty much and tighten the lines turn off the fence. on every yeah right if if i need to work on a certain paddock yeah. i just go disconnect the jumper fix the fence nice. and then hook the jumper back up and you just hand tighten these right yep yeah, he keeps talking about making sure these fences are tight squeeze it and okay twist it up we like to run at least 4,000 volts on this for pigs as, as a normal thing if they're really well trained 2,000 will hold them, you know, if they're really well trained. But uh, as a general rule, you want over 4,000. And really not that much labor, right? The biggest For... labor with pigs is specifically here is the, uh, the paddock prep. And that's, the paddock prep is key to keeping pigs. And you mean so... the paddock prep initially setting all this up? No, or I just mean, maintaining like the it. daily, like so the every, well weekly, I guess you would say. So I move these pigs about once a week. Okay. Um, what I do is I come in. And, well, you saw they weed whack it, tighten all the fences, and yeah. then electrify it, and then let them in. Like this needs weed whack. That needs weed whack. So that will drain your battery like crazy. Okay. So when you're gonna weed that, weed whack that? Um, they won't be back on this end for a while, uh. and so none of this is hot. I always weed whack the charged lines which run on the outside of the paddock. Okay, so the, re the how you didn't get, how you wouldn't make this hot is there's a jumper mm -hmm. line right there. Yeah, so, so somewhere down there you've disconnected the jumper. Right, right. Okay. See this actually, th this is, this can be, this is fine here. It's the hot line. So the lines that we actually make oh. hot are the ones that run the, this way. Uh -huh. And they actually run to the one that's always hot, which runs the length of this entire field. Okay. So these, once once you use them, you disconnect them and you don't have to mess with them anymore until you come back for the next round. Okay. And you take your piglet, you get your piglets into the holding area like you showed before, mm -hmm. train them. How long does the training take? As long, when they don't go, when they don't go over that training wire for four days, you're good to go. And then you, how do you get them then up to this area? Do you trailer them? We, them? we, tr we normally trailer them to, to that area. And um, and then when we bring them home, it depends. We 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 have some of these are on uh, some of these pig pastures are on rental ground, you know, that's five miles away from the farm, so it's hard to walk them that far down the road. But here here at home, uh, even if they're a mile away from the house up in the woods, um, when they're done, we just let them walk home. We we drive them home. Yeah, and you drive that, and, and that brings me to this question. So they're done here. This is electric fence on mm -hmm. either side. Right, right. Um, so it's pretty easy to drive yes. with your pig boards. Yes. What are those called? Yeah, yeah, sort, called sort, pig boards, sort boards, pig, pig sort boards. And uh -huh. why did you draw this side? Oh. If we're, if we're going back here. Oh, well, because over this side, there's another set of pigs. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> all right. You're, you're hustling, you're getting, you get. Yeah. Why well, do just one row when you can yeah. do two, right? Well, well, uh, I mean, it, again, this is an ideal yeah. set, ideal setup, but not every one of our pig pastures are like no. this. I mean, we have, we have one, for example. And you're only talking about maybe going through, really only hitting this twice in a season um, at the most three times often twice but at the most three times so yeah we have 
we have one uh, we have one pasture for example we have a that has a um, it, it's a valley in the center like this and 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 this is this is all uh, this is all woods in here okay we let the, uh, and and um, and so the, the the pig paddocks the pig paddocks come out and oh okay and and then and then the the so the outside is like this that's the field okay okay and then the pig paddocks yeah are like this okay and then of course you know again the 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 the, the um you know the the the, the wooden in, in these cases the we because because our our access road this is our this is then becomes our access lane right through here so these um gates here again they're portable portable gates but they're 16 feet or 12 feet maybe they're 12 feet rather than six feet because we've got to get not only pigs but uh tractors through here too and they're wood gates and they're heavier okay. actually actually i think what we have there are two six foot gates um that that we can be um you know uh, yeah. that we can set up with a little bit of dog leg and that dog leg helps it to stand up it, it's a little easier if, if you if you just kind of uh, set up a, a 12 foot gate. It's easy for it to be a little bit flimsy, but if you put a dog let, you know, here's your, here's your, your, your gate posts. And, and these gate posts are small, you know, they're little, they're little, uh, short, you know, wooden posts. Uh, when you put a dog leg in it, it gives it rigidity. Yeah. So the pigs could come up and scratch on it and stuff. If, if you have, if you have a, a, a long gate here and it's straight, the pigs will come up here, they'll scratch on it and it's going to, it's going to bend a lot. You're going to put a lot more pressure, but a dog leg gives it some, some rigidity. And all I saw was water or uh, not water chain. Yeah. One chain. That's towards right. The bottom, not yeah. the top. Right. Uh, Cause that's where you're going to put the pressure and that was mm -hmm. it. Yeah, that's right. And actually this was attached with a chain. That's right. That's it attached was, with a chain. It looked like you had used to hinge them. But maybe that didn't work. No, no. Well, what we used there to were do, some uh, yeah. Well, the, the the key here is when I when I, I'm I'm saying wooden gate on purpose, mm -hmm. because we've tried other kinds of metal gates, things like that, and they always it's it, it's too it's too fragile here. Uh, there's too much whatever the pigs moving on it and stuff. You can short out if you use metal. So we right. say wooden gates because that way, when we first started, we used plastic chain to to uh put around here so there wouldn't ever be a short but the pigs ate the plastic mm -hmm. chain and so we had to go to metal which meant we had to go to wooden posts okay. or wood, wooden gates yeah. so every, everything is insulated and there were nothing fancy about those gates they must have oh. been pine boards yeah it, it, it was scavenge 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 lumber and yeah and the, I like that you drew this because this is more, you know, the square is nice because we can get the concept, but this is the reality. Yeah, that's so, because mm -hmm. nobody has a square. <laughs> it's like the permaculture principles, the zones. Yeah, nobody yeah, has yeah. A perfect circular right. yard. So this to measure it out, are you just walking? And because that's that's not even a square. So it, how do right. you do the math on that? To figure out. Oh, you just kind of by guessing, okay. by golly. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You you walk it, and you yeah. got a little bit of a you know, bit a little of a parallelogram. I think and people might be surprised how accurate they could actually estimate. Oh yeah, you you, you can come here within five percent. Within five yeah. percent is is plenty close for yeah. this for this kind of thing. You didn't talk about, and I didn't see shelter for these pigs. So are you relying on the woods? Yeah. Okay. So so. Um, or do they always have trees? Yeah. Generally, all of our pig pastures. Are silvo pastures, okay. so they've got trees in them. We have a couple that aren't. They're on like old uh, corn ground, and there we do have portable shade for the pigs. So it's a trailer. It looks just like it looks just like the turkey gobbledygook, except it doesn't have perch boards in it. Okay. So it's the same thing. It's it's a trailer with just nursery shade cloth on top. Pigs love to get wet. Uh, I mean, pigs love water. Okay, so you don't have to keep them dry like you would a chicken. Okay. Um, and so, so the you know shelter we want for chickens we want uh, we want an opaque roof an impermeable roof, but for the for the pigs pigs and turkeys 
cows, they're perfectly happy to get wet on a, you know, on a hot just summer day. Sun. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. It's just to and get them out of the sun. We should maybe, I'm thinking, talk water. Uh, how do you get water to your system? Okay, so, so here, uh, for example, there's a water line that lies right along the edge of this fence all the way around, okay? And at every other, so, so here, there's a valve. So that serves this paddock and this paddock. And then, let's see, and then here there's a valve, okay? And that serves, so you got one, two, that serves paddock three and four. And then here, there's another valve and that serves paddock five and six, okay? So every other paddock is a valve. And, and the thing about water, of course, pigs love to play with water. And so um, what we'll do is we'll put, you know, we use the, we use the, the Brower, um, the Brower uh, uh, water. So I always move their water last, specifically with this type of water. Um, when you pull this plug, it's gonna drain mm -hmm. and it's gonna dump all that water. And if those pigs are still in here, they're not gonna leave. <laughs> so, I mean, it's gonna create like a giant water slide here and they're just gonna lay in it and then you're gonna have real trouble getting them to go into where you want them to go. Especially right here at the door, right? Uh, where you want everybody to go? Crazy, muddy. Nice. I mean, it's heaven for them. <laughs> yeah. So you just reach down Did there. It, yeah, you gotta reach down and unplug it. Yep. Do they make smaller ones of these? Um, I'm sure that they probably do. Uh, this one works best for us just because of the size of the group. But I guess that you don't waste water because it's automatic water feeder. Right, and it's a float system. And you need you need a lot of water in there because one big pig could knock this over if it wasn't heavy. Right, yeah, it's got to weigh a lot. So even yeah. if you're just feeding one or two pigs, you still need the bulk. Yeah, and it's it's super important that they can't actually get access to water on the ground like this. So Why is that? If, if the water is dripping just a little bit, if there's any flaw in your system, okay. they're gonna expose it. So if I have water dripping in the mud right there, they'll dig until this entire thing tips over. Uh, yeah, I noticed that this is this was pretty dry around it. There's no yeah. like even splashing. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, and and I keep it to where the water doesn't come all the way up to here. It's maybe this is maybe only a quarter full, so okay. they can come up and drink. It's unlimited water, but it's not all the way up here where they can splash it out. And then once they make mud, they're just gonna start digging. Okay. And they'll tip the entire thing over and it'll flood the entire paddock. Okay. So you and always make sure there's no drips. Do you ever have to clean this out? Like, I mean, we're seeing some algae or something in there. That's not gonna harm them. No. It's, like it's better than drinking out of a pond, I imagine. Right, yeah. yeah. Right? It's not stagnant water. It's com it's always flowing and it comes from a cistern. It's fresh water. Uh -huh. It flows in there. Once in a while, I'll get, get in there. I'll scrape those out where they're actually putting their nose. They'll get feed and stuff in there. But generally, when I pull this plug every time I move them, that all fills up with water and then once i start rolling it it'll all fall out anyway okay it's the only one we've found where the pigs can't waste water because if you give them a nipple a a, a nose thing uh, any kind of other water i'm confident that the pigs actually draw straws or, or make a schedule and somebody's in charge to say okay mac uh, you take the you take the 10 to 12 shift uh, Jane, you take the 12 to 2 shift and the pigs sit there and they rest their their noses on whatever the water, you know, outlet is and it just drains. And then they get a big waller and then the pigs are really happy. And then, and then you've got a big hole and they gouge it out and your whatever your water system is, it all, you know, collapses and falls over into the new hole and you've got a mess. And so... Uh, pigs will play with water. So what we do is um, we have so normally we can you know we can kind of hang it up in a tree. So this you know this this water this water pan, okay, has has um, let me just you know it has two access ports on it. It actually is you know indented here with access ports so that the you know uh, pigs can drink there and um, and so we have a you know we have a, a, a float valve here in the top you know here's the here's the water level float valve here in the top and as long as it stays full it's heavy enough the pigs can't push it around and um, and so our water line comes in from the top and we just you know if there's a if there's a tree over here 
you know, we just we just hang this water line in a in a treetop, you know, and, and here's the here's the main line, and we just you know we just run it up. So the the point is to bring it to have it near the edge of the paddock, the the fence, the electric fence, have it near the paddock, hang your water line so it comes down from the top, so the pigs can't come up here and play with the water hose. If we don't have a tree nearby, what we've built, what we've made, are a couple of tall rebar. Um, pigtails, okay, that we can, uh, tall, I mean they're six feet tall, and we can push these in the ground right next to the side electric fence, run our hose through this pigtail, mm. you know, over into the over into the tank and that again that keeps the that keeps the water line from being down close enough where the pigs can play in it because if they if they can play with that water hose they will eventually gnaw a hole in it yeah and you just move that with them and we just we've just yeah one we, we just move that with them. our pig system yeah okay. we just need it one one per one per group okay. one per okay. group of pigs and I notice you don't create wallows for them do you? No, you we bet. don't. But they they make wallows. Okay. I mean, if they're if they're in a uh, if they're in a paddock when it rains, mm -hmm. they will make a wallow. So if there's no tree here next to you, the border or in your field that you can hang the hose up in a branch or something to drop it down in the water, we make a we make a a a, 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 a rebar like six foot tall uh, pigtail step in post thing holder that we can run the hose through and run it in and of course this would this would sit right outside the the pig pen um, and the waterer would be you know uh, three feet in and so the hose is is kept out uh, of the pigs reach because the pigs if they if they absolutely uh, if they can play with a water hose they will eventually gnaw a hole in it yeah. uh, every time they will yeah. do that this custom well, the pigtail. It's how they get the water line over this fence. But I imagine you could use a, I don't know, some sort of T post rig. Or yeah. yeah. Just a, basically, it's just a, to hold the the water line up yeah. on the wire. Even a small, maybe even a small one. So this has a float system in it, and you want. I'm not gonna get that. This in. thing right here to be uphill. Okay. okay. It'll, it'll leak. If these aren't perfectly even, you have to make sure that the, the float is, is downhill so the water reaches it first. You get your first customer, buddy. I, I'm not going to get that. You probably need to put it up further. This ground is... Oh, uh -huh. Just like that. You guys have got this system down. Yeah, you guys yeah. really do. Cheap system too. Yeah, that's Polyface's whole thing. I mean, I'm sure if Polyface really wanted to get high tech, yeah, they could. Yeah, yeah. You know, they have the means, um, but they're still in the the area of showing people that they can just yeah. do it on a like the the big expense budget. here is land, but you could also lease land this is, this for is fifty dollars an acre. Leased. So your interns are you train an intern, they're going to leave here. What do you think is the biggest mistake? They're most likely to make. What am, what's the biggest mistake I mean, with most the people pigs? make? Yeah, with, with the, managing the biggest pigs, mistake the with doing pigs, this system. Yeah, uh, the biggest mistake most people make is not moving them frequently enough. Okay. And so you're moonscaping. You're moonscaping the the okay. uh, the, the outdoors. Um, so we don't want to. So you leave them too long. So we have a hard and fast rule. They never stay in one place more than 12 days. And here's what happens. Uh, you say, well, you know, why is that? Well, because in 12 days, they will, they will create a very heavily impacted campsite of some sort, either a walla, a campsite, something. And so, so um, even if they haven't disturbed everything, they will have disturbed a portion and then they start making brick that you know what 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 is beautiful okay. and nice and 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 uh, okay. loose soil you know then becomes okay. then becomes hard pan brick and other so if 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 they haven't disturbed the paddock as much as you want in 12 days then reduce your paddocks or increase the number of pigs but in the group next time you don't just keep them there longer than 12 days 
to just say, oh, no, 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 12 days, the they're gone on. Because in 12 days, the thing is, when a pig has a paddock, when mm -hmm. a pig has a paddock, anybody that's got pigs knows this, when a pigs have a paddock, they do not spend equal time on every square yard. Okay. Um, they, they will pick an area and they will pick 50% of their time in this spot and 50% yeah. all out here. Okay. Well, what happens then in 12 days, they have too heavily impacted this relative to everything else. So if, um, if you're not disturbing, if you're not getting, if you're not harvesting the grass, blah, 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 what you want uh, in 12 days, then either reduce your paddock size or increase the number of pigs. Yeah. So here, you and I are both used to 30 to 40 inches of rain a year. We're in right. temperate. Does this it's 12 day rule and all this still apply in 12 inches of rain, mid California? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I think as you go drier, mm -hmm. um, that that the um, that the the stay can be longer. Okay. But the rest period also has to be longer. Okay. So I I, I absolutely um, I've seen you know plenty of dry areas, and I think because they're so dry, they can. Uh, you know they're they're more forgiving on the length yeah. of stay, but they're less forgiving on the length of rest. Would it be a good rule of thumb to say we we get 30 inches in this system of rain? Somebody gets 10 inches, would it would it be uh, say uh, they need three uh, times as yeah, much rest? Yeah, well cer certainly double, just okay. just as a general okay. rule, double. Okay. Mm -hmm. So instead of 80 days rest, 160. 160. Mm -hmm. So maybe just go through this once yeah. one season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All mm -hmm. right. I noticed there's trees in every paddock, and the, the pigs are enjoying them. There's not a there's not a wallow in this paddock. They don't create wallows if they happen because of rain or whatnot. Then it happens, but they don't go sitting about creating them. Anything else you think we should add? Oh well, you were asking about. Uh, what's the number one mistake yes, yes. That, that, that people make. So the number one mistake is leaving them too long. Yeah. That kind of got mm -hmm. us onto this, this 12 inch. The, <laughs> um, the, uh, the other biggest mistake they make is failure to maintain the electric fence. Okay. A hot spark and it's got to be visible. So, you know, I would, like, I would like to tell people that these electric fences you set up, you set them up today and they're good forever. Mm. But vegetation grows up, weeds yeah. grow up, stuff grows up. And so once a year or twice, we have to weed eat, okay? Yeah. And, and the, the pig, you, you can't hold the pig responsible for something he can't see. And so, uh, so there is some maintenance here. Now, electric fence is cheap. You can set up a lot real quick, but it does require maintenance. That's the offset. You know, yeah. that's the offset. So you have low capitalization, low input cost, but you have annual maintenance costs to keep it visible. The second thing, so vis visible, keep the vegetation off, keep it clean, keep a hot spark. And the final thing is uh, to keep the wires at the right height and tight. Mm. The looser the wire is, the more pigs can play with it without getting shocked. If a pig can come up to wire and they can, and he can kind of, kind of shoulder up to it, you know, and the wire hits his hair first because pigs are hairy, right? Hair is insulator. Mm. Hair is insulator. It's not like the nose, right? So they can come up to it, and if they can, if they can rub on a little bit, play with a little bit of hair, and they start pushing on it before they actually make enough skin contact to get spark, you're going to have trouble because those pigs, you don't want them to play with it. So tight, taut, nice, tight, not piano wire tight, but enough that, that you know, if you, if you touch it, it's not gonna wanna move away uh, where you get good, good skin contact. Anything else? No, I'm, uh, I'm, I, 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 would just, uh, I would just tell people one of the beauties of this system is that it, um, you, are, you are substituting the, the drugs, the concrete, the fans, the stench, the toxicity of manure and all that, you are substituting that with a very uh, beautiful, yes, it does take a little more labor per pig, you know, uh, person hours per pig, but you're substituting all that negative with something that actually nests into the ecosystem and, and, and makes, a, makes a pretty landscape. Yeah, because you're not and it sure makes a better pig. You're not vaccinated. No. You don't need do any antibiotics. No. What if somebody gets sick? If somebody gets sick, the best tonic for pigs that get sick is charcoal. Okay. And if you read any swine swine handbook prior to say 1940.
40 and it starts into the you know the, 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 the disease and the sick you know the wellness part the first uh, part of it will say charcoal and we've had pigs that you know, you'd think they're gonna die tomorrow uh, and and uh, you know and, and you feed them some charcoal and they will just blossom. Do you ever have to force feed them that charcoal? Oh no, no pigs. Look, they don't have to file any insurance claims, they don't have to pay taxes, they don't have to deal with any uh, licenses and so uh, they've got 24-7 to, to, to curiously find things, right? And so yeah, they find them. And they don't watch TV so they know what they need. They're not, they're not going for it because of what somebody else told them they needed. They're going for it. They, they know in, they're, they're in touch with their internal you know, needs and they, they, they find it. Well, thank you, Joe. That was great. Absolutely. Good, good so, info. Isn't that amazing? And it can totally be applied to any operation. Now, I've learned lately, it's not so much about what you know as it is about who you know when you want to learn to do something. In this case, learning to grow your own pork. I've assembled folks like Joel, myself, Cliff Davis, Jordan Green, and others to teach you everything you need to know for raising your own pork from piglet to the plate. That's available now down in the description under my course, Permaculture Pigs. Check it out. And there's special incentive for checking it right now because until Friday, what day is that? November 1st, up to midnight, there's an early bird special. So we're gonna be dripping out content through November. So if you get in now, you get most of the content and you wait patiently through November getting the rest, but we give you 40% off. So grab this by Friday midnight. I mean, technically that's gonna be Saturday midnight, but just get in there while you can. Link is down in the description.